Good morning. We welcome you to our service this morning. We welcome you to Super Bowl Sunday and our Super Bowl of Caring Sunday. So I hope you uh, came prepared this morning. I just want to remind you, uh, since we're doing things a little differently this year, instead of our uh, usual soup competition to raise funds for our programs, uh, this year we're simply asking you to bring cans of soup and <clears throat> make a monetary donation as well. Our big Super Bowl pot that we want to fill up is back in the fellowship hall. Not fill up with soup, fill up with money. And uh, so I hope you'll uh, remember to give uh, on your way out if you haven't already done so. But uh, we're excited about the opportunity to share. Uh, the cans will be going to the Wesley Foundation, which is our student ministry, Methodist student ministry at Lamar. And uh, they have a food pantry, and soup is probably their number one needed item. So we're going to supply them with all the soup we collect. And then our monetary donations uh, have traditionally gone for school supplies. So we will be supplying all the three or four campuses of the uh, Warren Independent School District with funds uh, for school supplies for needy children. So... Uh, we're excited about the opportunity to share what God has blessed us with, and we hope you will participate as well. Just a reminder, especially for those watching from home, but for any of you that didn't remember, uh, we will have uh, a cart uh, for the cans of soup out in front under the uh, drive through carport through Thursday. So if you didn't bring any soup today and you would like to, You'll have till Thursday to drop it off, and for anybody that's dropping off funds and doesn't want to come in the office, our mailbox on the outside of the door uh, will uh, be available for you to drop off any funds that you might like to give as well. So we want to kind of continue Super Bowl Sunday through Super Bowl Thursday, February 11th. I think that's all I have by way of announcement. Ricky, I'll turn it over to you. Well, good morning. It's good to see everyone here this morning. Uh, in the way of announcements, uh, if you'll look in your bulletin there, you'll see where the Warren Food Bank, the, uh, the food donation item for February is going to be two pound bags of flour or two pound bags of sugar. And uh, you'll see that we're going to have a church council meeting on February the 22nd at 6 o'clock. Uh, if you're on the council, you're urged to attend this meeting. If you're not on the council, you can come to the meeting if you want to know what's going on in the church. So you're welcome to come to that meeting. Also, you'll see that the Circle of Faith Estate Sale Committee is collecting donations for their spring sale in April, which will be held at our parsonage. <clears throat> if you have anything that you would like to donate to that sale, if you'll go to get a hold of Jenny Anglin, uh, she'd be more than glad to either pick it up or have you bring it to her. So... Also, I'd just like to remind you that uh, after the church service this morning, we have a joint Sunday school class in the sanctuary here. We've been studying the book of Acts now for, uh, well, we're on 24 today, so that'd be 24 weeks, I guess. Well, minus four because we started with the first four together. Well, that's high math. But anyway, we've been meeting for a while. <laughs> if you'd like to stay, uh, uh, we have a uh, DVD that uh, uh, Jeannie Jones uh, donated to us a uh, very excellent program that comes on the teachers well me not so good but the video is really good so anyway if you'd like to stay for that we're more than welcome uh, are there any other announcements that need to be made well if this not uh, we'll do our call to preparation you have come from afar and waited long and are weary let us sit side by side, sharing the same bread and drinking the same drink as we celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another Join together in saying with me the prayer of confession and pardon. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. 
and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Let us uh, stand together for our opening hymn, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3 together. Remain standing for the reading of the Affirmation of Faith. It's the Apostles' Creed, traditional version, 881. We'll read this together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Now is the time in our service where we share our joys and concerns. We'll start with our concerns first. If you have a concern, if you'd raise your hand and Harold will bring the mic to you. Harold, we have one right there. As most of you know, Abby, my granddaughter, um, this about a month ago, she became a big sister. Well, the baby was came in at 1.1 pounds, and so she's upset, I know, and mom's upset, and the family's upset. So I ask that you keep Abby, her little brother James, and the family in prayers.
Are there any other concerns? Well, we have a lot of concerns on the back of our bulletin here, uh, church families and our family and friends of the church. We ask you to keep praying for those folks. And if you have a, uh, a prayer concern, uh, you can call or text Sally. Her number is on the back of the bulletin there and uh, give them updates on the, the people that are on the list. Uh, I spoke with uh, Janie Meredith this week. Uh, she seems to be doing better. She's glad to be home, of course. Uh, and she uh, told me that there's been several members of the church who've come by and brought food for them, and uh, they're very appreciative of that. Uh, they they really feel the love that this church has for them. So we, we thank you all that are doing that. Uh, Lynette went to the neurologist Friday for her follow-up appointment on the, uh, the issues she's been having with her eye. Uh, she's got her sight back. She's doing well. The uh, neurologist basically said, you know, not a whole lot we can do about this, uh, 30% chance it could happen again. But he put her on some supplements in a, uh, to, to help her, and hopefully it'll, uh, it'll alleviate this issue. But uh, uh, she's doing well, so we, we got a good report in all in all, to be honest with you. Uh, are there any other concerns? How about some joys? Anybody got any joys? Jamie has one. For the last few years, my eyesight has been getting really bad, and I could not even read that. But my joy is someone invented this new contact that puts fluid on your eyeball. <laughs> and even though it's a lot of trouble, I can see. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's good news. Any other joys anyone would like to share? All right, well, Pastor Andy, I'll turn it back over to you then. Let's bow together for a few moments of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for another wonderful opportunity to join our hearts together and to come into your presence in prayer. We thank you for your presence here with us this morning, and we thank you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We come into your presence with burdens on our heart for those in need among us, especially for the requests that were spoken here, as well as the unspoken requests in our hearts and all those listed in our bulletin. We ask that you would bring healing, comfort, and peace to your people today. We thank you that you are our great physician. You know and understand these needs even before we bring them before your throne. Your Holy Spirit is already at work moving among us, touching and healing hearts and lives. We thank you for the joys that were shared here this morning as well as the many answered to prayer in our own lives. And so we thank you for walking so faithfully with us. We give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is that time in our service for our tithes and offerings. And as we have uh, throughout COVID, our offering plate is in the back. If you would... Uh, please drop off your offering there, or there's also one in the fellowship hall. And uh, for those that are not able to join us, uh, we continue to offer a couple of options for uh, your uh, willingness to continue to support the ministry of our church with automatic bill pay. That way you don't have to leave home, or if you're able to, you can drop by the church office and drop it off either in the office or in the mailbox outside. Let's bow together. For a few moments of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so very blessed that you love us and you provide for our every need. And so we thank you now for this opportunity to give back to you. Bless these, our tithes and offerings. May they be used to bring honor and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let us stand together for the doxology.
Amen. Oh. I forgot to say this blessing. Oh, Enjoy all right. Six wedding anniversary. This past week. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. In that word of celebration, let's remain standing for our hymn of praise. Uh, morning has broken. We'll sing verses one, two, and three. Be seated. I've got a joy I didn't mention a while ago. It's good to see Luke up there with his grandfather this morning running that uh, video up there. Thank you, Luke. You're doing a great job, son. Amen. Would you please stand for the reading of God's Word? Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 35 through 44. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. 
Send them away so they may go to the, into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we going to buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they, so they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to the heaven and blessed and broke the loaves. He gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were filled. And they took, the, took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of, of fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Open our spiritual eyes and ears to see and hear your truth for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we are continuing our Epiphany sermon series called Let Your Light Shine. As a matter of fact, next week will be the last week of the Epiphany series before I start my Lenten series. And uh, next week kind of sums up the whole process very nicely. So I hope you'll come and, and hear and understand God's calling in our lives. Our scripture this morning is the familiar story about the feeding of the 5,000. There's a comment I'd like to point out that I think is probably as important or more important than any command Jesus may have given. The comment is in verse 42. They all ate and were satisfied. Is there a hunger that food will not satisfy? Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, and we remember that when Satan wanted him to turn the stones into bread, Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So to put that response in modern terms, Jesus kind of recognized the old adage that we've all heard, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Jesus took advantage of a physical problem to keep the door open to address the real concern that he had, and that was their spiritual problems. Now here's a fascinating verse out of that passage that I found unusual uh, in, in the reading of Mark's gospel. Verses 39 and 40 said, Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. They sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. And I thought, that's kind of a, an unusual detail to put into this passage where there was tons of things. You can imagine the, all the things that were going on when Jesus told the disciples... Uh, that no, they weren't going to send everybody to town to get their own meal. They were going to feed them right here. And you can imagine the disciples were in a tizzy. Things were happening fast. And yet, Mark chose to tell us that they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. So what do you think's going on here? Out of all the things taking place to feed these 5,000. I want to look at this seating issue because I think it's very important. Jesus was taking advantage of a teaching opportunity that um, I know because uh, I've experienced it off, uh, many times in preachers' meetings, Bible studies. Our bishop likes to do it. And that is, after there's been some speaking, then we're told... 
okay, everybody divide up into small groups. And we're going to give you a question to discuss at your table or in your, in your circle of people that you've gathered around you to have this discussion. At first, you might think, well, he just seated them in groups of 50s and 100s to make serving easier. But I think there was much more going on at this point. Breaking them down into uh, smaller groups gave the opportunity for personal clarification on the issues that Jesus was addressing. When you have a group of over 5,000, you can see where it would be just about impossible to, for anybody to be able to ask any real questions. These smaller groups provided the opportunity for Jesus to have a chance for his words to be explained to people that didn't understand from those who did understand. This miraculous meal was just a means to an end for Jesus. He wanted to make sure physical hunger was not going to be a reason for his spiritual teaching to be interrupted. Back in verse 34, the verse preceding our passage, we read why Jesus encouraged this huge group of people to assemble. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd... And he, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. This miraculous meal allowed Jesus the opportunity to authenticate the message that he was bringing from God. Jesus' goal throughout this whole process was to use their physical hunger to access their real underlying need of spiritual hunger. He taught them, then miraculously fed them, which reinforced his teaching credentials because his heart went out to this lost generation of Jews who were not being fed spiritual food by the Jewish religious community. So to bring that same spiritual hunger forward 2,000 years and apply it to us this morning, it brings us to what is ailing our nation today. We have a world that's reeling from COVID-19, and the people that are supposed to help keep us informed and guide us, guide us safely through the process have turned it into a gigantic political football. At the same time, we're also dealing with racial unrest of nationwide proportions. The diagnosis is spiritual starvation. So what is the answer to the spiritual starvation that is ravaging our nation and our world? The answer is really quite simple. 2,000 years ago, the answer was Jesus. He taught them, he healed them of their diseases, he performed many other miracles. Well, the answer for us today is still Jesus. Only he's not here in physical form anymore to perform those miracles and do all the things that he did while he walked on the earth. We are his messengers. We are the ones who he entrusted his truth. We are the ones called to bring his message to the world. We as Christians, we as his church, have been given the spiritual food to feed the five, <clears throat> excuse me, 5,000. Do you know what created that whole scenario of the feeding of the 5,000? If you know the background, then you can better understand our calling today. Jesus, before this passage began, was trying to take the disciples away to a deserted place to debrief them from their first 
missionary journey. Jesus had just sent them out two by two into all the neighboring villages and communities to spread the message that Jesus had shared with them. Upon their return, they had wonderful, miraculous stories to tell. Unfortunately, when Jesus was preparing to take them off to this deserted place, literally for a debriefing and an an opportunity for them to share the miracles that they experienced, some of those who had been following them saw where they were headed. And a large group immediately gathered there where the boat that was carrying Jesus and the disciples landed. And so this is when we uh, know Jesus' response when he saw all those people. As I read to you from verse uh, 34, As he went ashore, he saw a great uh, crowd and had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus was planning on literally debriefing, hearing what the disciples shared in their first time out, sharing the message of Jesus Christ. What's interesting is, as you continue reading in the book of Mark, you'll find that these disciples, even though they, this was near the beginning of Jesus' ministry, they were untested, untrained, and as we see as the gospel unfolds, they really didn't have a clue very much about what Jesus was all about. And yet the scripture says, he gave them authority to go. And they experienced Miracle after miracle. I find that interesting because that is the sum total of why we don't go. We don't feel like we're prepared enough. We don't feel like we know our Bible well enough. Basically, we're afraid. And yet here are these disciples who were not highly uh, educated men to begin with, who had just begun this ministry with Jesus. And as we know, they seem to misunderstand things all along the way. And yet Jesus gave them the authority and they went and they experienced his power. We don't need to be trained or certified in order to bring spiritual nourishment to a hungry world. As Jesus has touched our hearts, he has given us the authority to touch the hearts of others. Even if it's just sharing our own story, we can and will see miraculous things happen. The only reason we don't see miraculous things happen is because we're afraid to go and to share. Listen to Psalm 34, 8. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. This was a common psalm that just about every Jew who had any religious training at all would know. Jesus brought this simple verse to light as he taught them, those 5,000 people. He took them from spiritual hunger as they gathered to hear him teach to physical hunger at the end of the day And then as he provided miraculously the loaves and the fish, he took them to physical nourishment and finally to spiritual nourishment as people recognized God's power at work in Jesus Christ. So as we prepare our hearts for communion in just a moment, may we be reminded 
about his death and resurrection that opened the door for our spiritual nourishment. As we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are empowered to go and to share that with others. So as we take communion together, may we be reminded that our calling is to respond in obedience and to bring spiritual nourishment to a starving world. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you this morning for Jesus' amazing ministry and our calling as his disciples to go and to share that message with those around us. It's so obvious to see how badly our world is hurting. Our friends and neighbors are struggling. And we have an answer that they need to hear. So we thank you for our calling and the opportunity we have to serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I hope all of you were able to pick up a communion cup on your way in. Uh, if not, just raise your hand. The ushers would be happy to bring you one. And uh, just a reminder, uh, there's two uh, tear-off lids on each cup. The top clear one will, when you tear it off, will access the wafer, and then the bottom will, will access the juice. So if you would, uh, please tear off the top layer and uh, pick up your wafer. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Take and eat this, and remember that Christ died for you, and be thankful.
And now tear off the uh, bottom lid accessing the juice. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance of Christ's blood was shed for you. And be thankful. Amen. And now let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to remember and celebrate the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us. As we go from this place, may we take his love with us. May we be a light in a world that needs to see the light of Jesus Christ so desperately. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As we close our service, our hymn of invitation is number 370 in our hymnal, Victory in Jesus. We'll sing verses, just verse one together. Let us stand together as we sing. Amen. Don't forget about Super Bowl Sunday, not the game tonight. I'm talking about the uh, uh, donations of can and, and cans of soup and money. Uh, like I said, the can is back in the fellowship hall if you'd like to contribute. And thank you for supporting these ministries. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you.